So this question, I think I can, it's simple enough for me to just to do it on the screen. So let me do it that way. It says, um, particle has a mass and is traveling along the line x equals 5 meters. Oh, that is a, such a, I think it's a potentially confusing way. I mean, it's not confusing in the sense, it's not ambiguous. It's definitely unambiguous. It's very technical. Um, but uh, I think uh, a lot of people um, need some time guiding their intuition. So if you have a line where x is equal to 5 meters, that's actually this uh, vertical line. Because these are set of points where x is equal to 5 meters. So it's describing, a, yeah, and, and this uh, hopefully should match with in the positive y direction. Yeah, that, that's uh, what the question is describing. A particle that's moving along this vertical line, and with the line, there's ambiguity. Is it going up or down? Well, it says positive y. So that is my speed of wave. So, okay. Yeah, it's one of those things where if they drew the picture for you, it'll be less confusing, but... Um, you should learn how to draw a picture like this. Uh, what is the particle's angular momentum about the origin? Oh, uh, this is a definition application question. So uh, with the angular momentum, I think this is a good starting place, just uh, remembering these two expressions. You know, Angular momentum is rotation inertia times angular velocity. This is kind of built as an analogy to momentum, which is equal to mv, inertia times speed. Um, you just replace them with the angular version of it. Now, this expression for this question will be um, not quite useful. Uh, you can't directly use it. Complicated. The other expression for angular momentum that you should have memorized is it, this is actually the definition of orbital angular momentum. Uh, orbital angular momentum is defined as the displacement vector. So that would be like this vector here, cross product with the momentum vector. So there's a momentum vector that's parallel to V. So um, it's a, just a purely mathematical operation. R cross P will, will give you the angular momentum. Um, now here, uh, to get the direction, uh, you have to do the cross product. So let me just, uh, uh, quickly do that. This is a quick demonstration of right-hand rule <laughs> where I have, uh, uh, so this is a cross product with R and P, you know, cross product defines a plane and the, the, the goal of the vector that's associated with the cross product is the, to find the vector that's a perpendicular to that plane. Now, if you're thinking of the plane of the screen, then you have two vectors perpendicular to that. Vector coming out of the plane towards you and the vector going into the plane away from you. And this is where right-hand rule comes in. It's the arbitrary convention that everyone on the earth agrees to use so that we can choose one out of those two vectors and everyone will agree. We use right-hand instead of left-hand because 90% of us are right-handed. And the 10% of you, please just your, use your non-dominant hand <laughs> for this one thing. So. Um, the version that I teach in the lectures and the one I prefer to use is the whole hand version where my uh, fingers, so I first uh, orient my hand so that my hand points in the direction of the first vector. It's uh, pointing in the same direction as R vector is pointing. And I then further orient it so that as I curl my fingers, my fingers curl in the direction of the momentum. And this is, okay, so it has to be pointing this way that my fingers are right now pointing in the direction of R, and as I curl it, it's uh, curling in the positive Y, or this direction, um, in the direction of momentum. So this orientation of the hand, the direction that the thumb is going in, will tell you the cross product. It says the cross product is pointing towards you out of the screen. Let me just quickly do it from my perspective to make sure that it works. So this R cross P, it'll point, uh, so the direction that R cross P points in is out of screen uh, towards you. So in this uh, coordinate axis, um, this, uh, this direction, it's the same direction as X hat 
cross y hat. If you do the x hat cross y hat, and um, we define our three-dimensional coordinate system so that x hat cross y hat is equal to g hat, not minus g hat. This is the right-handed coordinate. And somehow, if you define this so that x hat cross y hat is minus g hat, this would be left-handed coordinates. And we simply don't use them. Uh, if you ever see me using left-handed coordinates, that's because I made a mistake. <laughs> so, so, um, so since my g vector is coming out of the screen as well, um, so this cross product is pointed in the positive g direction. Oh, I guess that was the only choice. Positive g direction. So, so okay, that's uh, the one portion of the definition of angular momentum, the vector definition that gives you the direction. And the second part, the magnitude portion, is one where uh, there's a kind of quicker way to do this. Um, if you are only interested in the magnitude, the magnitude of this is r, p, sine theta, where r and p are magnitudes of r and p vector. And the way I like to group this is actually sine theta along with r. The theta is the angle between these two vectors, by the way. This would be theta here. Uh, when you think of r sine theta times p, this quantity here, this is what we've been calling lever r. It's the perpendicular component of the displacement vector. So as you look at this picture here, the perpendicular component is this. This is my r perpendicular, uh, or the, the I guess that's the x-coordinate. So I can just do x-coordinate times momentum. That will give me the correct answer. So let me use this as a fancy calculator and just plug in the numbers. My x-coordinate is um, 5 meters. <laughs> that's my perpendicular component of displacement. And my momentum should be mv mass. 0 0.5 kilogram times V, 1.5 meter per second. They are all a basic SI units, so multiplying these should give me answering basic SI units. So 3.75, that's it. So um, as you do questions in rotation, you will find that um, uh, you need to know all the relationships that uh, relate to a particular quantity. So if you simply have this memorized and stopped there, then uh, you're going to run into issues in questions like this. You also need to know this, and you also <laughs> need to know how to apply right-hand rule and all that. I guess an upside is that questions like this are relatively few and far between. In Physics 4A, I think uh, you can get through Physics 4A relatively well. Um, um, uh, even if you don't fully master cross products and right hand uh, they become far more important in physics 4b um, so for people who may be struggling with those i'll just you know <laughs> just look forward to mastering it in physics 4b